the new age lies exposed a false light 2 timothy 4 3 through 4 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables the new age has been around for over 50 years popularized by alice bailey who followed the teachings of madame blavatsky founder of the theosophical society theosophy means divine wisdom and it is any system of thought concerned with the relationship between god and the creation intended to help man achieve direct experience of the divine madame blavatsky composed the books isis unveiled in 1877 and the secret doctrine in 1888 both became worldwide bestsellers Blavatsky despised the Christian idea of a personal God. Her work pushes an occult, Masonic, Satanic worldview, being led by the Antichrist spirit, which sums up the New Age movement. 1 John 4, 2-3 Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. What is the New Age Movement? The New Age Movement is a spiritual system of thought and practice composed of beliefs, values, and traditions from various schools and religions throughout the world. The New Age movement is an umbrella term for topics including Buddhism, Hinduism, mysticism, Gnosticism, paganism, pantheism, occultism, esotericism, witchcraft, meditation, yoga, psychedelics, channeling, divination, sorcery, mind science, reincarnation, astral projection, UFOlogy, spiritual psychology, law of attraction, manifestation, etc. The New Age is a collection of beliefs and practices aimed at bringing enlightenment. The goal is to raise consciousness to a higher vibration using divination and occult practices to a level of self-divinity. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. If you're practicing in the New Age doctrine, I ask you to please turn away and do some more in-depth research. You'll find the only truth in life is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 8, 32 And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You're taught about astral projection, and then you learn that some people use it for evil. I thought my intentions were good. I thought if I could just like muster up enough positive energy that I could push the negative energy away and it couldn't mess with me. Cameron Clark professed faith in Christ as a boy, but in high school he began being drawn to New Age philosophies. I would have still said um, that I was a Christian, but I didn't think drinking or smoking pot was uh, wrong. I thought that that was just fun. I just looked for 
well, maybe there's like a spiritual way to justify the life choices that I was making. Crystals or uh, magic or whatever, I mean, it's fine. He also says he was sexually abused as a young man, which resulted in a deep distrust of people. It happened more than one time. Having an experience like that, you don't feel safe in the world. You still hold most people at a distance to the extent that like you don't, you know you should care about that person, but it's still very easy to like just let go and not care. When Cameron went off to college, his interest in new age grew. I felt like I was taking control and like could have some kind of control over what was happening in my life. It's cleverly worded as healing or evolving. The new age told me that Jesus was an ascended master. He was just a human who realized he was God. Beginning to believe them, you run not against what you were taught or what you learned when you were younger. Cameron's parents became concerned. My husband and I would pray, not understanding and pleading with God to give us the right way to approach it, also to give us patience to talk to him without alienating him. Eventually, his interests turned to a near obsession. Crystals were attractive because they were supposed to be healing, energy, manifestation. Um, tarot cards, same thing as far as like telling you what you should do or what you need to work on or like what things might be happening um, in the future. Cameron also tried LSD for the first time in college. But after a while, this combination of drugs and witchcraft took a darker turn. Cameron began being tormented by spirits at night. Stuff comes into your dreams. You see it around and moves really fast. So I was really trying to figure out, like, this is spiritual warfare or psychic attack. I just want people to leave me alone. About that same time, Cameron read an article, ironically, in a New Age magazine that made him question his new beliefs. Jesus was in there with his words from Matthew 5.44 and Luke 6.28. Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who persecute you. And I thought, okay, Jesus, like, can you help me do these things? Through a mutual friend, Cameron met Pastor Chad Osborne and his wife Hunter, a former Wiccan who had turned to Christ and whose story was featured on The 700 Club. She invited me to have dinner with them and um, that was incredibly impactful because there's a number of things that they explained. What I remember about that night is Cameron coming and sharing some experiences that he was having, like uh, seeing things, you know, seeing um, what I interpret to be just dark forces and him just really being terrified about that. And we shared with him, there's only one way to be free, free of that thing and that, uh, that is to submit to Jesus. Because of the spiritual seeds that were planted in his childhood, Cameron responded quickly. When I prayed, and ask God to make himself real to me, I believed that he would, and he did. I just like realized that Jesus was Lord, um, that I needed him uh, to take control, that I needed him to save me. I literally bowed down on my knees and I gave my life to God. Um, I gave my life to Jesus. Cameron enrolled at Cedarville University and is planning to pursue a career in ministry to help others avoid the pitfalls he experienced. His spirit has faithfully worked in me. I'm not paralyzed by thoughts that I can't overcome. I am rebuilding relationships with my family. I'm actually experiencing love for others and receiving love from others. As I read his word, as I pray, as I worship, all of that is God working in me, as good as it gets, is only a fraction of how good it will be when you're with Jesus. I believe that I was God and that we could all become Christ too, if only we realize this inherent connection we have to, to God. At 19 years old, 
New Age blogger Steve Bancars was a spiritual guru to hundreds of thousands of followers. For Steve, it had spiritual and financial benefits. I was getting 200,000 to 300,000 views on it a day, and the income to me was an affirmation from God. I believe God was rewarding me with helping wake people up into a higher state of consciousness. It gave me a sense of power, a sense of purpose, and a sense of meaning and value, perhaps. Steve grew up in a Christian home, but as a teenager, developed a fascination for aliens, the paranormal, and psychic phenomenon. That led him to question his parents' Christian beliefs and eventually led to a full-blown obsession with New Age theology. The first thing that really got me doubting the biblical worldview was uh, UFOlogy. All of these UFO sightings, um, evidence from the ancient world that we might have been visited, and there was enough evidence to make me consider that maybe the universe is filled with intelligent biological life that was perhaps naturally evolved. If you piece together the alleged evidence for reincarnation and the alleged evidence for um, you know, ancient astronaut theory, you get, um, you get New Age theology. Jesus remained part of Steve's worldview. I didn't really reject him, but I didn't accept him for who he truly was. I created an idol out of Jesus to suit my own preferences, to suit myself, and to suit my sin. This Jesus was politically correct. He was a universalist. I wanted to be my own guide, and I didn't want to have to play by somebody else's rules. As Steve began blogging about New Age practices and supernatural phenomena, he came to enjoy his prominence and the money and vices that came with it. But it was never enough. I was a lust addict for 10 years or so. I was a really broken person. I didn't realize how broken that I, I truly was, but I was depraved. I was miserable. I had depression and anxiety that I was suppressing. I had all of this quote unquote spiritual knowledge all of this information, and it wasn't bearing any real fruit in my life. I felt like something was missing. I felt a little bit dead inside. Steve had a disturbing dream. When I opened my eyes, I was hovering four feet over my bed and realized that I was out of my body, and I started having a panic attack, and a being appeared in front of me, and this being had red skin with black markings on his face. It just scared me because I realized that I wasn't in control, that this stuff is more powerful than I was, that these forces were real, and that they didn't care for my well-being. They didn't need my permission. I was in their playground. Shaken by the experience, he began investigating the claims of the Bible and Jesus more closely. I would sleep with the Bible under my pillow because I knew there was something there that was authoritative, that was true, and that was secure, and that had power over anything that I was scared of. In his search for answers, Steve was drawn to stories in books and online of people who had encounters with Christ. I would watch another near-death experience where someone would go to hell. Jesus would rescue them out of hell, and they'd come back, and the fruit of their lives, they would be totally transformed, and I'd feel moved and touched. And I'd think to myself, okay, there's something real to Jesus the Jesus of the Bible. Steve finally accepted one of his mother's many invitations to go with her to church. At the end of the service, he prayed and asked Jesus into his life, but it was more of a mental exercise than an act of faith. I just decided in my head intellectually that I was going to soften up to him, but I still held all the same New Age beliefs. I still believed in everything that I believed in my sin life. I wanted a little bit more of him, but I guess I still didn't want all of him. After a few days, Steve realized he couldn't ignore the truth any longer. I reached a point in my life where the brokenness was weighing on me so much that I, I needed to stop playing games with my life. I needed to stop playing games with God and stop playing games with Jesus. And I just decided to go outside and to just fall on my face before Jesus and just weep. I was just weeping like a baby. I was submitting. I was repenting, I was tired, I was sorry, I was broken, and I couldn't do this alone anymore. And I was crying out for, for him. I wanted him. In that moment, Steve had an experience with Christ of his own. 
I could feel that he was Lord over me and he was Lord over all creation. I could feel that he was concerned for me, but I could feel that he was king. I knew that he was king over creation, that the whole universe was under his feet and the wind was just totally infused with his presence. And the thing that stuck out for me that made me realize that I was dealing with, with God was how the wind and the trees, this, the sounds outside the birds, the crickets, they sounded like they were glorifying him. Like he was, he was there with me and they were acknowledging that somehow. Like, cre creation recognized him. Steve burned all of his New Age books and made a public statement to his online followers. I told people within a few days of that experience, I'm sorry for misleading all of you astray. This stuff is not of God. They're tools of demons to deceive us and lead us away from Jesus. And Jesus is the Son of God and he's exactly who he claimed to be. Steve endured waves of ridicule and personal attacks from the online community but that hasn't stopped him from trying to teach those who persecuted him. His website, reasonsforjesus.com, provides evidence and sound reasoning that prove the claims of the Bible and the only path to truth, forgiveness, and joy in life come through Jesus Christ. He delivered me from the stronghold of New Ageism and of occult philosophy. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I feel more whole than I've ever been in my life. If there's hope for me, there's hope for anybody. I was the most lost person that I knew, and the Lord drew me to himself and had mercy on me. We come to the Lord. He forgives us. He gives us his spirit, and he wants to help us heal and restore us and walk us through these traumas and these pains. And He wants to accept us and welcome us as a son into relationship with him, not into dry religious rule keeping, but into a supernatural, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and His presence.